Let's stand for the reading of the Word of God. Acts chapter 8. I love being here with you. It says, And Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was a great persecution, a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. So this is the embryonic stages of the church. The church at this time didn't even know who it really was. It had power, but it didn't have structure. It had purpose, but it didn't have order. And as for Saul, he made havoc. He made havoc. He made havoc of the church. This is Saul about to become the greatest influencer of the church. And at this time, he didn't know who he was. So he was wreaking havoc on a church that didn't know what it was. And it was entering into every house and hailing men and women committed them to prison. Therefore, 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 because of the persecution, therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria. And preach Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. And there was great, what? Joy in that city. Father, I pray in your presence today, that your power will prevail. And in this place and in this hour, that your glory would touch lives, that, that your glory would touch all that concerns us. As we've been worshiping you, we have felt your presence. So all that's around us, that your word would set us free in our minds and our souls and our bodies that your word that heals the lame and, and binds the brokenhearted in the name of Jesus, that that healing would break out in this place and through the airwaves, through the online listeners, I speak healing and deliverance. I speak, I speak healing and deliverance. I speak healing and deliverance. And in anyone, anyone, anyone in this place that loves Jesus, say amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. We are in the book of Acts, which has, I think, been mislabeled the Acts of the Apostles. But if you'll study the book, you will find that it's not so much the Acts of men, but it's actually the Acts of God through men. And I love the way that God works through his church. And this book was written, this letter was written by Luke and a lot of people don't know that it was actually one continuous letter. We have the Gospel of Luke, and then we have the book of Acts. But when Luke wrote it, it was one letter because if you look at Acts 1-1, it says, and Jesus began to do and teach. The implication is that he started, but that he was also going to continue because he wasn't finished. What was done on the cross is finished, but the work that Jesus is doing continues through you and I. So all that Jesus began to do, and, and people struggle to understand this. Now follow me. I'm going to take you some places today. People struggle to realize that Jesus is still doing what he did on the earth when he was here in the physical body, but he's not doing it in his physical body like he was at that time. He's now doing it through his mystical body, which is you and I, which is the church. So Jesus is continuing to work through his body. It's still him. In not many places that we see these two combine, the physical body of Christ, the mystical body of Christ, but allow me to explain. You remember at the Last Supper when Jesus was there and he was breaking the bread and, and he said, this is my body, take and eat. So we see the, 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 the physical body of Christ and the mystical both together at the same table together. And the body of Christ says to the body of Christ, take eat, this is my body. Isn't that cool? Think about the meaning of that. Had the enemy understood what I just said, 
he would not have allowed Jesus to be crucified on the cross because the enemy's purpose was to get the body of Christ out of the earth. But all it did was change forms. Yeah, he got the physical body out, but the mystical body, which is us, we are still here and we are moving and doing things through him. So that's who you are. That's who we are, the body of Christ. And your name, you may have never thought about it like this before, is not Randy or David or, or Jenny or Elaine, but your name is actually Jesus Christ because when the Father sees you, he doesn't see you as an individual. He sees you as Jesus. Okay, think about this. Because Jesus has covered you in such a way that when the Father saw Jesus on the cross, he didn't see him. He saw your sin. He saw your sin. So when he reacted to that, and Jesus said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, why had God forsaken him? Because he was covered up with you, and he was covered up with me and our sin, and, and I'll prove it. When Jesus says you can go to the Father, he means it. But he says, don't use your name. Use whose? Use his name. That's how we could get to the Father. That's how we have our power. Use his name. Anything you ask in the Father, for, to the Father, in Jesus' name, Jesus said, that will I do. It's a promise. It's a promise. It's why power in prayer, it, it is so important that we pray. It's so important that we spend time with the Lord. It's so important that we pour out our hearts to him and, and understand who we are in him. And I wish I had time to preach that, but I don't. But, but, but listen, his blood is the big fancy word here, the propitiation of sin. The blood has covered you. So it allows us to come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. Do y'all come boldly to the throne? I want you to come boldly to the throne. You don't have to come crawling or, or begging or feeling ashamed or guilty. The world wants you to think that we're not worthy to, to talk to our heavenly father, but we are through the blood of Jesus because he loves us. And you could come like a son or a daughter because that's who you are. Touch somebody and say, Jesus, just touch somebody. And say, Jesus, say, Jesus, say, Jesus, Say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When you're walking because of Jesus, you're breathing because of Jesus, you have a lung full of air because of Jesus, you're able to see because of Jesus. It's in him that I live. Amen. It's in him that I move. It's in him that I have my being. We've sung about him and to him all morning. It's who we are. It's who we are in Jesus. It's all about Jesus and the church is trying to get their minds around who they are because the Holy Spirit has fallen on the day of Pentecost. Remember back in, in Acts 1 and they've received power, which is so amazing. If you think about the power that the church received and the same power that, that we have today, and they'll spend the rest of their lives trying to, to live in that and to flow in that just like we do. We, we, we spend our days like, okay, we know we have the power, but what does that look like? What does that feel like? How does it manifest? How do we, how, how do we live and walk in it? So remember... They didn't have, the early church didn't have deacons yet. They didn't have pastors yet. They didn't have a lot of structure yet, but they had power. They had power. They had power. But without structure, power can be a very dangerous thing. Oh, do you hear me? The Holy Spirit had fallen with so much power in Acts 1, and then we see it in Acts 2, and they stayed in Jerusalem. They stayed because Jerusalem was the, the, the epicenter of, of this, and you actually have three religions spawning out of the epicenter where Jerusalem is, and I've never been to Jerusalem, but I know the whole world kind of centers. Right? If you watch the news, you can't help but see that, that Jerusalem is the center of, of everything. But, but remember, the Holy Spirit had failed. And he told them to go, but they didn't feel like they were ready. I want to know if you've ever thought that you weren't ready. Have you ever lived in a situation and had a situation where you didn't feel like you were ready? Like you weren't prepared? Like you just didn't have it all together? Have you ever not felt ready? You didn't have all the details. You were walking by faith and not by sight. It's what we're told to do, amen? But that was the feeling of the early church. And whenever we don't see... What we need to do, and whenever we don't know what to do, we hang around what we know. We hang around the familiar. Does anybody know what the familiar looks like? This was the early church. They were about to break out, and by the way, that's what I, I named this message, Breakout. 
for some reason, I, I, this word kept coming back to me, break, break. We had uh, breaking barriers a few weeks ago, and this one is, is break out. I just feel like God's about to break out and do some new things. And going into the new year, I know this is not a Christmas message, but I really feel like God is, is going to open up some things for you, for your family, for your marriage, for your kids, for this church, for this region in the new year. And I know Chris has been talking about it's a time to build. It's a time to get going with God. It's a time to follow him and not just to hear him say, follow me, but actually get in line with him and, and follow him. So these guys were stuck in Jerusalem. Oh, and we hang around what we know. I feel like preaching. Whenever we hang around something too long, God has to send us something to get us to move. Because believing and being a believer in our Lord Jesus Christ, it's not a sit still thing. It's a move thing. It's a move thing. It's not a building. It's not a denomination. It's not a doctrine it's a movement. Now, early believers weren't even called Christians, were they, Dan? They were called followers of the way because the way was a movement, and it's still a movement. And so the Father's house isn't just about a church. This isn't about a building. This isn't about four walls. This isn't about where you sit or even how you worship. This is about a movement. This church is about a movement in this area, and so we rise, and we rise above the storm, and we rise above the things that that Satan wants to hold us back from. Come on, y'all. I'm talking about your church. I'm talking about this church, and the devil wants to hold us back. But don't get caught in his lies. Don't you dare get caught. I want you to make some noise because God is on the move. Let's put our hands together that God is still on the move. But the problem is that fear will turn movement into a monument. Fear will always want us to stay back. I'll say it again. Fear will make a movement turn into a monument. Most of our entanglements just tell us where we've stopped, where we've stopped following. We memorialize where God has been. The early church was caught here. They were memorializing where God has been. Jesus had always been with them in physical form and now he has ascended and he has sent his spirit and now they were to flow in that but they really wasn't sure what to do with it so rather than thirst for where God is and where he was going the church was stuck in where he had been so follow me I'm going somewhere y'all are way above average y'all are way too smart they told me you can handle this so I want to make sure that you're able to handle it. I'm going to, I'm going to try to drop it like it's hot in here. Can I say that? I'm not, a, I'm not a guitar player like James, but man, oh. God has a way of shifting us and shifting things and getting us away from the familiar and the comfort in order that we scatter See, we come here, we gather, we worship, we, we have some training. This is a boot camp. I've said that. But then what, what are we told to do? Go out. Go out. Go out. We're to scatter. And that's what this text is all about. The church, they wanted to memorialize where God was. And now they're getting pushed out of their comfort zone. Because who comes along? Saul, and he's attacking them. And so many times we thank God for open doors when we should be thanking God for a lot of the closed doors. God knows what he's doing. He can close doors that we don't need to go through anymore. And so when the writer of Hebrews says that Jesus had to be crucified outside of Jerusalem, I think it was a clue that Jesus came to show us that true life and power is outside of religiosity. See, they were hung up on Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is the epicenter. But then he told them to scatter, and it's why some people can't handle a church like this because, like Jesus, we tend to break all the rules. We are rule breakers. We change the game. We break the order. And I've been watching y'all praise God all morning. Oh, hallelujah. And now I understand that, that, that this group, and I want you to understand that this group right here that we've read in Acts 8, these bunch of Jesus freaks, they weren't called the church. That didn't happen until Antioch. They were called the church there, but they've been so used to huddling in Jerusalem that God needed to shift them. He had to allow, watch this, he had to allow some persecution. And I want to talk to everyone who has suffered persecution. Everyone who has ever suffered a trial. Everyone that has ever suffered a hard time. Y'all know what I'm, nod your head like you know what I'm talking about. 
some persecution. Really, I want to I know. In this country, honestly, what has it cost you to be a Christian? Maybe a friend or two? I mean, seriously, what has it? Because you think about other countries that are having church underground right now that, that are actually, um, they are not afraid, but there is so much more attack on them than what we experience. I'm not afraid of anybody coming through that door and telling us that we can't meet like this. I'm not afraid of anybody coming through, but, but there are places. I'm talking about persecution, though, in your life. And so we're told to glory in tribulation. Anyone can glory in good times. You can praise God in the good times, but how about in the bad times? You know what it's like to praise God when everything is going wrong? Have you ever been there when, when, when all hell is breaking loose and, and you're still praising God because you know in the end it's all going to be all right? Uh-oh, the real breakout is when you praise him then. Because we're told to glory in our sufferings because the suffering produces perseverance, a perseverance character, amen, and character hope. So suffering caused the church to scatter. Again, I'm going somewhere with this. I'm trying to lay this groundwork. It made them move into the next dimension to go to the next level. And that's where God wants to take you. He wants to take this church to the next level. He doesn't want you to get stuck. I know things were good in the past. And so many people think that the past, the good old days, the good old days. I'm telling you, we're living in the good old days. And you'll continue to live in the good old days if you follow Jesus. You don't have to think and memorialize, oh, it was so great back then. Just get excited about what it. God is doing now and where he's going and where he's taking you so we see God has a way of ordering our steps in a way that will have you packing your bags and moving out of your comfort zone I can take this off now can't I feel it I don't have to worry about that oh so we read in Acts and it's almost like a footnote go back to it Philip goes down to Samaria let's talk about Samaria for a minute can we do that Samaria it's not an accident that Philip goes to Samaria because God has unfinished business there. Well, we know about Samaria. We've heard Samaria somewhere in the past. I'll get to that in just a minute. So let's talk about it. John tells us that Jesus was sitting on a well in Samaria. So you have a well sitting on a well. You get that? Yeah, 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 yeah. God has some unfinished business, so, so let that sink in. Oh, yeah, he's the well on a well, and he's waiting on a certain loose woman. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? I used loose on purpose because she'd been married five times, yeah? And, and now she's with the sixth man. She's got a boyfriend. She's been married five times, and now she's got a, she got a situation. The sixth man, but she meets the seventh man at the well and when she meets the seventh man she found everything that she had been looking for oh yeah she had found it she had found it and when she met him the search was over because he set her free and he gave her the victory you remember it wasn't her thirst that initiated the conversation do you remember if you read the story in john jesus starts by saying woman i thirst Oh, she thought she was going there to draw out some water, but what she didn't know that even though she had thirsted for water, he thirsted for her. He was wanting to satisfy her heart need because she was going to be the vessel that set it off in Samaria. She was going to be the one that launched a revolution in Samaria. And we don't even know her name. It could have been Helen. It, it could have been uh, Teresa. It, it could have been Faye. We don't know her name, but just as we don't know her name, God had needed someone in Samaria to plant seeds in Samaria because without seed, there is no harvest. Without seed, there is no harvest. So she was the seed. Now, Philip goes down to collect the harvest, okay? Are you with me? I know you're smart. I know. Watch this. She goes back to the city to tell all all the men that since she evidently knew all the men really well would you agree she she probably knew them all she said come see a man she said finally i've met a real man let me show you what a man is now after church i want you to go back to all your exes and say i want i want to show you no don't do that don't do that bad idea don't but the woman sowed the seed the woman sowed the seed the woman sowed the seed and i want to speak to every woman in this place that gets disrespected that gets looked down on that that, that people think that they're in inferior because you know men for whatever reason like to put women down i want to start a revolution in this church with every woman 
Seriously, with every woman that's listening, I want you to come out of the shadows. I want you to come out of the background. I want you to come to the forefront. I want you to stop feeling sorry for yourself. I want you to stop feeling like you ain't enough because God's going to use you. Yes, I'm talking to every woman right now. God's going to use you to set something off in this place. He's going to use you. And I need some sisters to make some noise right now. Could you, all, my, all the ladies in the room, yeah, 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 yeah. Every woman in here is a woman, and I know that, but I want to talk to the women that can't say, I've never drank, I've never smoked, I've never been to the club. And if you're a woman like that, I'm not against you. I'm actually for you. I celebrate you because there's a reason why you experience some of those things some of those times in your life because you're bold and 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 you don't care what you say and you can just say it like it is and you let the chips fall where they may yeah yeah i'm talking to all the sassy women yeah you know who i'm talking about and now this lady runs into the city watch this and she says come see a man so the 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 seed is planted Okay, the seed has been planted. No wonder that Jesus said, I got to go to Samaria. Then he didn't get to go to Samaria because he planted the seed. He just met the woman because what he was really trying to do was find a woman bold enough hmm, to set it off in that city. So I want you to fast forward to the scriptures that we read today. We haven't heard anything from Samaria since then until now. And so Saul was killing believers, but Philip said, I'm going there. Something has started in Samaria, and I'm going to go there because God has some unfinished business there. So some time had passed. The only problem was Simon the sorcerer was there, and he had set up camp. He had set up camp. And any time the enemy knows that God is going to do something great, the enemy is going to send Simon the sorcerer to counter what God is doing. Does anybody follow me? Simon the sorcerer was here because Jesus... And anytime this happens, when Jesus is planting wheat, the enemy is going to plant tear. Yeah, he, so, so we're, we're, we're planting all this wheat. Don't you think that the enemy ain't trying to plant tear? I mean, Chris has even talked about it, the, the demonic influence that, that tries to even interrupt the things as they are getting ready to lead us in worship. There's all kinds of, y'all have experienced that. We all have experienced that. If you're not experiencing that, I would question how much you're doing for the Lord. How closely are you following? Because, man, I'm telling you, the closer I get to Jesus, the more I feel like I'm enemy number one. And I love to fight. Let me tell you, I'm going to take a break. Um... The other day, I was hunting, and by hunting, I mean I was sitting at home watching the field, so I wasn't actually, Chris makes fun of me. He's like, you're doing what? I'm like, I'm watching the deer, just waiting for the big one to walk out. So anyway, I don't see any deer, but something does come out of the woods, and it sits down. Now, before I tell you what it is, this is very uncommon. Number one, that you see them in the daytime like this, but it was a coyote. It comes out, and it sits in the field, and I'm, I'm looking at it through the binoculars, so I casually go and get my gun. I'm looking at this thing, because if you know anything about hunting, coyotes are not your friend. I, I will go so far, I want to say this, I hate them, because they destroy the things that you're really trying to hunt. So I put the crosshairs on it, and then I think, okay, I haven't told the girls and Melanie downstairs, because if it goes boom in the house, that I didn't want them to jump or be startled, so I put my gun down, go downstairs, I said, I'm getting ready to pull the trigger on the coyote. The only problem was when it went back up, it was gone. It was gone. So enemies like that. He's going to come in, he's, he, he's, going to, he's going to show you himself, but he's not going to stay around long. The best thing to do is when you see him, get rid of him, rebuke him. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that in just a moment. So Saul was killing believers, and Philip said, I'm going there. Okay, Simon the sorcerer was there. But what I, I want you to see is that even though the enemy was there, God had a plan. He was not done. Let me show you something about the enemy's attacks. The enemy loves, loves to take over territories. Okay? And I'm not just talking about geographical territories. Allow me to explain. God sends Philip glory to God. Watch this. Let's go deeper because the spiritual warfare that exists, and this is what Satan and the enemy is trying to do. The, 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 the spiritual warfare that's going on in Wilkesboro is different than the spiritual warfare that's happening down in Greensboro or over in Houston or down in San Francisco. So you got to understand the region that we're in. And so, so the devil is trying to do things because he knows that if something good's happening, he's going to try to destroy it. So, so watch this. You remember when Jesus was trying to, or not trying, he was getting ready to cast out the demons in that one certain man, and, and the demons cried, forbid us to not leave the region. 
We'll come out of the man. They agreed to that. They said, just put us in another vessel. Let us be put in another vessel because we put so much time and so much energy. The enemy is doing this in that region. They didn't want to leave the region because certain regions are given over to certain kinds of perversities and demonic warfare. It's in certain families. Let me, let me give you an example. Grandmama, she got pregnant out of wedlock. So mama got pregnant out of wedlock. And now the daughter is pregnant out of wedlock. That's a spirit. And it's a generational thing. You see where I'm going with it? It's, 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 it's a spirit. So daddy was an alcoholic. And I'm an alcoholic. And now I'm seeing my son starting to get high. Okay, it's a spirit. It's a territorial spirit. And it doesn't want to let the Ellers go. And it doesn't want to let the Johnsons go. And it doesn't want to let your family go. If you're not careful, certain things will run in your family. But you, oh God, you want to break out. My heart is that you want to break out for your family and for generations to come. Oh God, I feel something. Tell your neighbor to break out. Break out. Break out. To get healed, you got to break out from thinking that God should do something because he's already done something. It's your responsibility to get in alignment with that and to agree with that and to receive that something. I'll show you another one. Remember Abraham? He lied about his wife. He told the king that his wife was his sister, which is really, I mean, the Bible is so interesting to read. Would you not agree? So fast forward, Isaac, who was Abraham's son, did the same thing. He lied about his wife because his dad did it. It was the same pit, it was the same chain. So something was about to change. Let me go deeper. It used to be that when you went to the doctor, they used to ask you about your health. Okay, but now you've gotten older and they ask you about your mama's health or your daddy's health. Or your grandmama's health. Why does it matter about your grandmama's health? She's dead. I'll tell you why. Because there's a chain link between you and the previous generations and the way you handle your mind and the way you handle your, your attitude and rein in your emotions, the way you talk to people, it's handed down and there's a certain chain that's got to be broken if it's not in agreement with the Lord. So, watch. I am not going to let the devil defeat me. If grandmama was prone to depression and your mama was prone to depression, you didn't feel it when you were 15, but now you're 45 and you're starting to feel some of that depression. It's not your depression. It's your grandmama's depression that's being handed down. And these chains, they got to be broken. That's why I told you to break out. I ain't going to let the devil defeat us. Oh, hell no, because I'm going to let... The, the Lord lead me. We got to the rebuke. I didn't say that out of disrespect. We get to talk to the enemy. Enemy number one. We get to rebuke him. We rebuke spirits. I'll give you another example here in just a minute. But I command the spirits of the enemy to be released from this place. To be released out of your life. I command them. Oh yeah. To leave this place. And that the Lord would rise up in you and us. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just want us to, to praise him. I, I just want us to praise him. We don't have to praise him right now. We're going to have another chance to do that in just a minute. But in your life, I want you to praise him, out of, praise Jesus out of defiance of the devil. I want you to praise Jesus with attitude. I want you to praise Jesus with conviction. I, I want you to praise Jesus like you mean business, like your life depends on it, right? Like, like you're going to rebuke suicide and like you're coming out of promiscuity and like you're coming out of pornography and like you're coming out of adultery. And I want you to pray. Let's just do it. But now let's pray God for all of the good, good, good things that he is. Because I will not abuse my wife. I will not leave my husband. I will not beat my child. Even though I've seen that in previous generations, I'm breaking out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This may not be affecting you because I don't know who I'm preaching to. But the reason you couldn't stay where you were is because you now have a devil to fight. And now as we're moving along with Jesus, watch this. Everything in your life that God has used was used to get you ready. And you're coming into a season of your life like you've never seen. I mean, that's, that's the obvious, okay? But everything in your life has happened for a reason. The reason you come to this church, a reason you praise God in this church. Okay? The reason why this church has got, I believe, an anointing. I don't know if you felt it yet, but it's because God is wanting to do something in your life. And 
your life in your life like you have never seen and he's wanting to take you to the next level he's wanting to take you to the next dimension if you will allow him to do it and he's not afraid listen god is not afraid to move some things and shift some things and take some things out of your life oh yeah 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 to get you into that new dimension that brings him the most glory i want you to praise him for that i want you to praise him in your quiet time like you've lost your mind I want, you, I want you to praise God in, in the shower. That, that, and don't worry about telling your family what you're going to do. I should have pulled the trigger on that coyote. I shouldn't have told I, Hey, I want you to just praise God in, in, your, in your life. Like people sitting beside of you, you're, you're praising God in the car. You don't even care what the person at the stoplight thinks. You're like, hey, that guy is crazy. Yeah, we have lost our minds. We have the mind of Christ. Amen. Amen. So the test is to stay focused and now our text says that philip is focused he goes down to samaria and he didn't go down to samaria to ride the ferris wheel he didn't go down to samaria to have a cup of tea he went to samaria for a mission god put him on a mission and when god puts you on a mission listen to me hell gets nervous the enemy gets nervous when God puts you on a mission. So God put this man on a mission, and the demons began to tremble. They started trying to stop the man from getting where he was trying to go. I'll prove it. Let me give you an example. You remember when Jesus was going to heal the man over in Gadarenes? He was going to deliver him, and a, a storm broke out of nowhere. The Bible said... The Bible says, the Bible says that the whole ship began to rock. The whole ship was rocking. And Jesus was what? Asleep. And Peter was afraid because he thought the whole ship was going to capsize. Why do you think the storm broke out? There was a reason why that storm broke out. Because the devil knew that Jesus was on his way to deliver the man that was under demonic influence. And the Bible says, oh, yes, I feel like Preach and tell your neighbor you're in the presence of the Lord. Tell him, Jesus, Jesus. Just tell him, wake, wake yourself up. Tell your neighbor, Jesus, Jesus, because this is what you get ready. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is resting in the boat. And now the reason he's resting is because he knows there's going to be a fight. In fact, he knows that there's a legion of demons that he's getting ready to fight. So he's in the bottom of the boat and he's asleep. He's asleep. Jesus is asleep. He's asleep. He's asleep. He's asleep, he's asleep in the middle of the storm. What kind of man sleeps through the middle of a storm? but he's asleep what kind of man okay so the boat is rocking picture this you know this story and it's filling with water i'm just thinking about how boats were made that bad this is not the norwegian cruise line this boat was probably taking on some water but the winds and the rain and, and the wet and the water it didn't disrupt jesus and his rest it didn't interrupt his rest y'all didn't get that the winds were blowing think about it the winds were blowing. The storm was coming. The rains were falling. The thunder was erupting. And the boat was rocking. The wind was howling. The, the rain, the rain, the rain, and the rain, and the rain. And none of that, none of that woke up Jesus. But when one of his believers called on him, oh, yeah. I feel like going off, but I'm going to maintain my emotional stability right here. Let me tell you, you've got power to wake up Jesus like nothing else can. I mean, all you got to do is call on his name. Good God, do you know how much power that is? Tell your neighbors, say something. Tell your neighbors, say something. Say something because the devil's got you down and he doesn't want you to say something. All he wants you to do is stay quiet because you're being tested and the devil doesn't want you to say anything. Your marriage is in trouble and all the devil wants you to do is stay quiet. And I want you to say something because the devil knows that the power of life and death is in the tongue and if you open up your mouth you wake up Jesus I dare you to speak to Jesus just oh God Ooh, do you think Peter's voice had more decibel audible loudness than the cracks of thunder really but with Jesus man he can hear the faintest cry he can hear a tear 
rolled down your cheek at 3 a.m. Jesus, he hears it. And God is so in tune with you. Even your trouble will wake him up because he's for you and he loves you. By the way, I want to speak to every stress and, and ailment and illness and sickness that you've never said anything about. You're afraid to talk about it. You're afraid to tell somebody about it. I want you to speak about it and speak to it. Insomnia, eating disorders, to speak to Jesus. All the peace you need, to speak to Jesus. All the peace you need. Somebody holler, peace. Peace, 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 because Jesus woke up, and he didn't even need caffeine. I need a little caffeine in the morning when I wake up. Amen. I don't know how my girls jump out of the bed at 6.30 and they're like clear wide-eyed as that table. And, and I'm like, yeah, but Jesus didn't need it because he walked up to the bow of the boat and he faced the wind and the waves. And I think he cleared his throat and he spoke. He rebuked the wind and the waves. And he said, peace, be still. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. He rebuked the wind and the waves. You don't rebuke the wind and the waves. You rebuke spirits. And I came to tell you there's a spirit behind your storm. There's a spirit behind your storm. There's a spirit behind your distress. There's a spirit behind your dysfunction. There's a spirit that with that thing with your child. I came to tell you that you could take away most of their medicine. They don't need any more Ritalin. They don't need to be zonked out of their minds. They, they, they need Jesus. And there's a spirit that's after your child. There's a spirit that's after you and, and after me. But the Bible says that Jesus rebuked. And then the winds and the waves heard his voice the one the voice that made them listened oh and it overruled the situation the voice of jesus you know we have that authority and we have that power as well so the winds got still and the waves laid down and they sailed on because god wanted to get to the core of the problem now watch me that was a little diversion we pray against the symptoms of our situations. You ask God to fix the symptoms. God wants to fix the core. He was about to fix the core of the problem in Samaria. So now Philip goes to Samaria. He goes back to the region because it's not just about you. God wanted to get back to the region of Samaria. It wasn't just about Philip, okay? He wants to take back the region of Samaria. He wants to take back our neighborhoods. He wants to take back this region. He wants to take back your family. So the enemy just not just after you. He's after your son. He's after your daughter. He's after your grandson. He's after your nieces. And God wants to take back the territory. So, mm, mm, Jesus, 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 I'm going to praise him until every problem that I perceive has been dealt with. I'm going to praise him until I'm delivered completely, until every person that I know that's wrapped up in my family is off the, the medications or off of the drugs. I'm going to praise him when I can't make ends meet. I'm going to praise him in the hard times. So when Philip gets to Samaria, Samaria sort of been turned upside down, okay? I want you to stand up. Y'all look like you need to stretch for a minute. Stand up. I, I promise. Uh, I just want you to turn around. Just turn around right where you are. You don't have to stand up. You, I know some of you need to stay seated. I just want you to turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. Now sit back down. You need to just stretch. The reason I had you do that, you could do a backflip if you like. It's, it's, you're fine. I would watch the chair behind you if you want to do a backflip. The reason I had you to turn around is because God's about to turn around something in your life. He's about to turn it around in your life. He's getting ready to shake it up. He's getting ready to, to, to untie some things and unloose some things. But before we praise him for what he's about to do, let's praise God for what he's done. Just in your mind right now, think of something that God's done for you. I want you to thank him and praise him for that. And the persecution that brought us to where we are today. 
Oh, God, I had to be hated like that to get to where I am today. I had to be attacked like that to get to where I am today. And I wouldn't have the power, but I, mm, I feel the anointing here, the Holy Ghost. Something has to snap. I mean, break out in your life like you never thought it's going to. And I didn't even come to preach. I actually came to give more of a, a prophetic voice in your life. Now, watch this. I'm going, to, I'm, going, I'm going somewhere with this. Something has been holding you back. This going to break it's got to break it's going to break it's going to break because god wants it to break and i want you to break out i think everybody wants to break out of whatever it is they've been snared in so you've been praising god through the pain but the pain is about to break in your life something's going to change and you're going to thank God for this day. You're going to thank God for the pain that you've encountered, the, all the, the suffering that you've encountered in order to see back through it and be able to be the better version of you, more like Jesus, conforming to his image. So I, I know we're just one church, but I really, 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 Chris and I talk about this a lot, and Randy, I, I don't feel just like... I don't feel like I'm a pastor of just one church. I feel like I'm part of a, a group of pastors, elders, that are that are kind of pastoring this whole area. I don't know if you all have seen that lately, but I know God is doing something in this region. It's not about this church. It's about a city. So it's, a, it's, about, it's about this sale here. There, there's, there's a thing that God's wanting to break out. And I want to activate the sale in you. I want to activate the thing that's in you. God's going to do it. And he's going to put you in the enemy's camp. This is where it gets uncomfortable. This is where Philip had to go down to Samaria. He's going to put you in the enemy's camp in order to take back something that the enemy has stolen. Okay, he's going to use you. Do you believe that? He's going to use you. So I want you to just touch your neighbor one last time. And say, God's about to use you, sister. He's about to use you, brother. Say, get ready. Just tell him, get ready. Get ready. God is going to release something in you. You go, oh, God, yes, I do feel the spirit of release. You have the power over the enemy. God gave you the power over your anxiety. God gave you the power over the fear that you have experienced, power over your situation. This is what you can do. You can say, get back, devil. Did you know you can actually speak to him? You can speak to the enemy. You can rebuke those spirits. And I, I brought that to your attention a minute ago, that Jesus spoke to the wind and the rays, but there was a spirit behind that, and he spoke to us. That's what he wants us to do. So you can say, get back, devil. Get out of my mind. Get out of my belly. Get out of my body. Get out of my spirit. When you open your mouth and you holler out to God and you speak the name of Jesus, you can't have breakout. Shout, break out. Break out in your body and your mind and your energy. I just want you to get ready for it as we wind this down because Philip revolutionized this city so much so that Simon the sorcerer, don't miss this, wanted what Philip had. Now I know that might not have connected like I wanted it to, but get ready for people that once hated you to come to you to want what you have. There are people that have put you down that are going to want what you have and what you've got. And there's a reason why that you couldn't win with them. There's a reason why you couldn't please them. There's a reason why they would never accept you for who you are because God needed you to be alone because he never meant for you to become them so Philip is down in Samaria and he had reached a season where he was going to change some things God is about to change some things but you have got to be healed enough safe enough bold enough strong enough to let people in and be able to deal with people that used to scare you. Philip was not afraid to deal with Simon the sorcerer because God's going to use you to minister to people that's abused you, that's taken advantage of you. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to do it. And you just got to know when you're well enough, you got to be ready to give it to them because you're bigger than that. You've overcome that season of your life where 
you were down in the dust. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. The last verse, he rebuked the devils. He healed the diseases. And there was what? Great what? Great what? Great joy. Not in the church. I don't want you to miss this. There was great joy, not in the church, but where? In the city. In the city. So we haven't just been sent to, to create churches. We've been sent to take regions. So when the region is in crisis, you must speak because our vision, your vision, we can't be contained by these walls. We got to go. Jesus said we got to go. It's about kingdoms. The kingdoms of this world have become kingdoms of our God and of his Christ, and something is about to shift. I don't know if you can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can see it. How many of you are glad that you're a part of this? I mean, you're glad that you're here today. I want, you to, I want you to be ready for the breakout. I want you to offer him your life in a way that he will use you to take back this city, this region, and get yourself thinking about the vision. And some of you, you're fighting for your family. Keep showing them the love of Christ, the family that you're fighting for. Keep showing them the love of Jesus. You don't even have to approach them. They will start to see it in you, and they will start to ask you, what is it about you? How do you handle that? How do you keep a smile? How do you live? How do you have the joy? And they're going to have what you want because you, when you have that kind of peace, it's contagious. People can see it on you. They can see it in your eyes. They can hear it in your voice. And all I want you to do is think about the breakout that would happen that God could use you to help them. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Break out, break out, break out. I want you to bow your heads. Because if you're willing to, to get free from maybe the way that it's always been done and step into the purpose of God, the reason he's put you here in this time, in this place, such a time is this. I'm not talking about playing church. I'm talking about being the child of God. Breaking out from what's holding you back like a popsicle stick. Everything that's been holding you back. Every ailment, every heartbreak, every ounce of depression. I believe that God is going to break you out. Because greater is he that is in the world, in you that is than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you. Oh, God, thank you for the power, your power. As we stay connected to you, I get excited to think about the change. Not that you're just making in us because we realize this is not about us. But your grandiose plan for everyone here as you move and as you shift and you get us out of your comfort zone our comfort zone let it not be about what we want but that your will be done your kingdom come and so god we declare freedom we declare healing we declare peace in our families we declare chains to be broken that there would be breakout from generational curses that's, that's held us back, that we didn't even know was holding us back. We speak to those spirits and rebuke them in the name of Jesus because in the power of Jesus, we have life, we have freedom, we have abundant life. So I, I speak financial freedom, an abundance of your life in your relationships like you've never had before, closeness with your friends like you've never had before, with your spouse like you've never had before, and most of all, with Jesus like you've never had before. So as we come into these places like this to worship, let your hearts be free. Just give yourself over to him. I just want to thank you again, Lord. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I believe it. I believe that you are greater. And I believe it. I believe that no weapon formed against us will prosper. I believe it. I believe it. You are Lord. By your stripes, we are healed. We are healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you. Allie, do you want to come up and play for just a minute? We're going to just take a moment just to let our hearts be settled on Jesus.
A lot of times I feel like we come in here and, and we get jacked up and we're lifting our hands and we get a little rowdy and I love seeing that. And then we hear a message and it may take us high, it may take us low. I just want to remain in his stillness for just another moment. you. I just want to remind you. I want to remind you how valuable you are. You. I'm not talking about your neighbor now. I'm talking about you. I'm talking to you. Let me tell you how valuable you are. In order for something to have value, it depends on what another person is willing to give for it. The price they're willing to pay for it. I want you to think about this. What price was God willing to pay for you? He would give his only son to die in your stead. That's how much he loves you. Because he had to die in order for you to live. And here's the last thought I want to leave you with. when he died he died for so much more than your salvation yes he died for you to go to heaven praise God and you call on the name of Jesus amen the Bible says you shall be saved but from that point on as we follow the Lord there are so many more dimensions to him And as bad as I want that for you, you've got to want that for yourself. You've got to want to walk in it and get closer to him. And I promise you, he will let you get as close to him as you want to be. There's so much more. I feel like a teacup dipping in an ocean of everything that God is. So just let this be your final thought. Think about how much God loves you. That's what he's saying to you right now. I love you. 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 If you feel like you need to lean over and speak a word of encouragement to your neighbor, grab their hand, squeeze their hand and pray with them now's a good time for that as much as I like to worship and as much as I like to preach I love to see God moving through personal ministry individual ministry so let's just take a moment just, even if it's just reaching over and patting your neighbor on the, the hand whisper I'm praying for you and I love you yeah, 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 Praise to the King of Kings. Blessings and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Oh, how worthy you are, Lord, how worthy you are. Thank you, Jesus. And you came to break us out. Hallelujah.